Episode 108 Clear the Air After seeing Sarah enjoy Ava's company, Ivy was feeling deceived. Sarah had talked and explained everything to Ivy just this morning, and now she was busy laughing and smiling with Ava. Ivy believed Sarah to be two-faced as she pretended to be her well-wisher while supporting Ava behind her back. Ivy was laying on the bed with her eyes closed, but her mind was running through various thoughts. I need to distance myself from Sarah hereafter. She pretended to be on my side only to do otherwise. I have to accept the fact that now no one is by my side. I have to deal with everything all by myself. With all these thoughts surfing her mind, she drifted off to sleep. The next morning, Sarah woke Sean up as she said, Wake up, baby. Good morning. It's time to go to work. Get up or else you're going to be late, and then you will end up blaming me for not waking you up on time. Sean looked at her with a smile and pulled her towards him as he kissed her on her cheeks. I can't believe that I'm actually living my dream. I have always wished for my mornings to start like this, where your pretty face is the first thing that I see every morning, Sean exclaimed. Sarah grinned as she replied, What a smooth talker. You sure were popular with the ladies. She then handed him a towel and pushed him in the direction of the bathroom. Now enough with the sweet talks and go shower. I will be waiting for you downstairs. Get ready and have breakfast with me, Sarah giggled, and with that, she left the room. When Sarah headed downstairs, everyone was already seated around the breakfast table as they saw Sarah coming. They all greeted her with a smile and wished her a good morning, and Sarah too wished them back. Amongst all these happy chatterings in the family, the only member who looked blue was Ivy. Ivy had a lot of things on her mind. On one hand, she was trying to get over her feelings for Kevin, while on the other hand, she felt cheated as she saw Sarah's changing behavior towards Ava. Sarah smiled at Ivy and wished her good morning. However, she did not receive any response from Ivy's end. Just then, Sean got dressed for work and headed downstairs. He saw everyone at the breakfast table and wished them good morning, and the rest of them wished him back. Sean asked for their leave when Mrs. Rogers stopped him and questioned, Sean, why are you leaving early? You should at least sit and have some breakfast with us. Sorry, Mom. I have an important appointment today, and I have a lot to do. I have to reach work early and discuss the details about the project with Victor. Sean apologized. Just then, Victor arrived and motioned Sean to get moving. Sean, come on. Hurry up, or else we'll be late, Victor called out. Sean and Victor were about to leave when Mr. Rogers commanded, Stop right there, you two! Both Sean and Victor immediately stood in their spots. Mr. Rogers continued, I know work is important, but so so is health. If you both want to do really well in the meetings, then first eat something and gain strength so that you can work well. Come and join us now. Both Sean and Victor nodded their heads like good children and quietly took their seats at the table. Sarah, along with the house helpers, served food for everyone and then took her seat beside Sean. Seeing them so close to each other, Ava could not help but glare at them, which this time was noticed by Sarah. Sarah then on purpose put on a show in front of Ava as she looked at Sean and sweetly said, There you go, baby. Look at you. You look so weak. This is because you always skip your meals. Okay, now, eat up and get some energy. Okay, baby? Everyone present at the breakfast table was surprised to see Sarah's cute nature towards Sean, as she was someone who generally shied away from public displays of affection. Sean, too, was equally shocked, and he placed his hand on Sarah's forehead and teasingly asked, Are you sick, Sarah? What's gotten into you? Never mind. You can keep this up. I like this change. And I'm sure that today's meeting is going to go well, as after all, you are my good luck charm. Thanks, baby, winked Sarah in response. Ava was extremely jealous, seeing them exchange sweet nothings with each other, while Kevin looked at Sean and cheered. Wow, Sean, you are one lucky man to have Sarah as your wife. Sean smiled and replied, I agree, but then you too, my friend. I mean, Ava takes care of you like no one else in this house, am I right? Kevin looked at Ava as he held her hand in his, and with a fond smile expressed, That's true. I'm really lucky to have you, Ava. Thank you for coming into my life. Seeing both of them, Ivy's eyes were moist with tears, and she hid her face from everyone to secretly wipe them away. But her tears could not be hidden from Sarah, as she noticed Ivy. Sarah decided to change the topic of conversation in order to prevent Ivy from being hurt further. She saw that her plate was empty and offered her pancakes as she said, Ivy, why aren't you eating anything? Here, have some pancakes. Ivy, however, responded coldly. No thanks, 
I don't need any more pancakes. I am done. I'm going back to my room, as I have tests coming up, and I have a lot to prepare. And with that, she stood right up from her seat and walked back to her room. Her parents kept calling out her name, but she did not look back, even once, and went straight to her room. Mrs. Rogers was angry with Ivy's rude behavior. What is wrong with this girl? I could never guess what goes on in her mind. God knows what is up with her. I mean, why did she have to be so rude to Sarah? She was just offering her pancakes. That girl is just too much, Grace Rogers complained. It's okay, Mom, Sarah looked at Mrs. Rogers and replied. But then before Sarah could say anything else, Mrs. Rogers interrupted. No, Sarah, it's not okay. She isn't a kid anymore. We cannot excuse her all the time for her silly tantrums. She needs to grow up and act like an adult. I mean, we are setting her up on a date this weekend. If this is how she behaves, then I can't even begin to think what else she's going to stir up on the date with that poor guy. Hearing about the date, Sarah thought of talking to everyone about putting a hold on the idea of Ivy's marriage. But on sensing the tense environment at the breakfast table, Sarah thought that this was the best for now, to just keep quiet. She then looked at Mrs. Rogers and calmed her down as she said, Don't worry, Mom. Ivy's tests are coming up, and maybe that's why she's a little stressed and anxious. Don't worry. I will go talk to her later. After breakfast, Sarah accompanied Sean outside the house to see him off for work. As he was leaving, he hugged Sarah and said, Take care, babe. But don't you think you are forgetting something? Sarah knew what he was talking about, but she still decided to tease him a little and feigned innocence as she replied, Forgot? What did I forget? No, I don't think I have forgotten anything. Sean smiled at Sarah's innocence, and then with a sly grin, he suddenly pulled her towards him and took her breath away as their lips met. Sarah was lost in this kiss when she suddenly remembered that they were standing outside the house. She pushed him back gently and said, Gosh, Sean, aren't you getting late for work now? I am, but then I always have a hard time going to work because of you. Don't you know? Sean grinned and replied. He then checked his watch and said, I have to leave now, but don't worry. We can pick up where we left off when I return home after work, okay? Sarah blushed and Sean, with a peck on her lips, wished her goodbye and left for work. On the other side in the Miller's house, Adam and Lily's morning began in each other's embrace. After a romantic and passionate night, it was Adam who woke up from his sleep first. He opened his eyes to see Lily sleeping soundly in his arms, which cracked a wide smile on his face, and he thought, Last night was beautiful. With you so close to me, it feels like time has come to a standstill. I can't believe that I'm going to spend my entire life with my first love, whom I have been searching for, right since we were kids. You are the best and the most beautiful gift in my life. I cannot live without you. Lily, I love you so much. You have promised to stay by my side, and I too promise to never let anything separate you away from me. Just then, Lily opened her eyes and saw that Adam was looking at her. She smiled at him and wished, Good morning, love. When did you wake up? Adam placed a soft kiss on her cheek as he replied, When you were enjoying your beauty sleep. By the way, how are you feeling now? I'm sure that after last night, you must have definitely gotten better, am I right? Hearing his comment, Lily blushed hard and hid her face as she nestled into Adam's big, broad, and muscular chest. That's when something crossed her mind, and Lily thought, I need to confirm about it first, and only then can I tell Adam. But what will be Adam's reaction? Lily looked at Adam and asked, Aren't you going to work today? Adam nodded sideways and answered, No, I'm going to stay with you today. James will take care of the rest at work. I want to spend time with you today. That's amazing! I love you, Adam, happily expressed Lily. Adam too smiled and reciprocated as he professed, I love you too, baby. On one side, the Miller's house was filled with love, and on the other side, Sarah decided to talk to Ivy about her cold behavior at the breakfast table. Sarah knew that something surely was bothering Ivy, and she wanted to talk about it with her. Sarah walked to Ivy's room and knocked on her door as she called out her name. Ivy, open the door. It's me, Sarah. Please open the door, Ivy. Hearing Sarah's voice, Ivy opened the door and looked at Sarah and irritably replied, What is it, Sarah? Why have you come here? Didn't I tell you that I have tests coming up and I have to prepare for it? I'm busy. Bye. Ivy was about to close the door when Sarah stopped the door from being shut and requested, Wait a minute, Ivy. Just listen to me once. What's wrong? Tell me. And with that, Sarah forced open the door and entered her room and then shut the door behind her. 
Seeing Sarah enter her room, Ivy lost her cool and she roared, Stop it, Sarah! Stop pretending now! I don't need any of your fake sympathy or fake pity anymore. Sarah was completely clueless as to what Ivy was talking about. She, with a puzzled expression on her face, looked at Ivy and inquired, What are you talking about? What fake sympathy and what fake pity? I don't understand anything, Ivy. Can you please explain what's going on? Ivy took a deep breath, and as she looked at Sarah, she frustratingly spoke out. Sarah, weren't you the one who told me not to lose hope over Kevin? Weren't you the one who encouraged my feelings for him? Didn't you tell me to trust you and just wait? Didn't you want me to not give up on Kevin? And you very well know how tough it is for me to see Kevin and Ava together like this in the house. And despite all of this, you betrayed my trust and have been friendly with Ava, Ivy blurted. Sarah, as she kept listening to Ivy, slowly started realizing the reason behind her rude behavior at the breakfast table. Ivy, however, did not stop and continued. I saw you yesterday, slaving away for your sister. How you took care of Ava, and you did not even let her lift her little fingers, and were doing even the smallest of tasks for her. Also, I know that it was you who helped Kevin bake that cake for Ava before she began her fasting. Sarah, I trusted you, and if you could not understand my feelings or emotions, then the least you could do was be honest with me, instead of showing me fake pity and pretending to be on my side. So, my guess was correct. I knew you were going to say something like this. Ivy, listen up. I need to talk to you about something. And right now, no one except you will understand me. As for me taking care of Ava, I didn't do it willingly. But in fact, it was Sean who wanted me to look after her. You know very well about Kevin's condition. And Ava, because she fasted, had fainted a few days ago, which is why Sean wanted me to take care of her, as only if she gets better will she be able to take care of Kevin. And that is why I agreed with Sean when he asked me to stay back home and take care of Ava. But this is not the thing I wanted to talk to you about. Sarah smiled at her and replied. Ivy confoundingly looked at Sarah while Sarah told her how she found a plastic bottle from Ava's room, which confirmed her suspicions that Ava was just putting up an act in the pretense of caring for Kevin, only to seek everyone's attention. Even after listening to Sarah, Ivy could not believe her ears. Oh my God! How can someone do something like this? She lied to everyone about her fasting and was eating food behind our backs? Sarah, we have to expose her as soon as possible, or else she will yet again come up with a new trick and cause havoc in our lives, Ivy shockingly concluded. Episode 109 Close Ranks Ivy decided to join forces with Sarah and together exposed Ava's truth to everyone. This is when Ivy realized her rude behavior towards Sarah. She guiltily looked at Sarah and clasped her hand in hers as she apologized. I'm so sorry, Sarah. After seeing you last night, I just jumped the gun and misplaced my trust in you. I should have trusted you, but I couldn't see what was right or wrong in anger and ended up disrespecting you during breakfast. I should have talked to you before getting angry at you, but then yesterday when I saw you taking care of Ava, I felt terrible, and I could not understand how you could do something like that. And which is why today in the morning, you had to face the brunt of it. Please forgive me, Sarah. I am really sorry. Sarah smiled at her and hugged her. It's okay, Ivy. I'm not upset with you at all. In fact, I just wanted to know why you looked so disturbed and wanted to help you with your worries. And thank you for having an honest conversation with me. This way we could at least resolve the misunderstanding between us. As for Ava's truth, if we have to expose her, then we first need to find out that whether Kevin is really suffering from blood cancer or not, or whether this was planned by Ava to trick us all, Sarah explained. Ivy nodded her head and with a somber expression on her face replied, This is right. We have to do something that will help bring the truth to light and expose Ava for the kind of despicable person she is. She has devised a foolproof plan this time, and we need to at all costs spoil her plans. But then what do we do? Just then, Sarah was struck with an idea, and she excitedly exclaimed, I got it! I know how we can find out the truth, that whether Kevin is really suffering from blood cancer or not, but for this plan to be successful, we need to keep a close eye on Ava at all times, as now with the kind of innocent mask she is doning, she can do anything. Seeing her excitement, Ivy too was curious. Yeah, you're right. But then what is your plan? What are we going to do? 
Give me at least some idea, she asked. Sarah, with a sly grin, whispered something into Ivy's ears, who, after listening to her, exclaimed, Whoa, Sarah, you're a genius. This is an amazing idea. But the problem here is that do you think Ava will be okay with all of this? I am afraid that we might have to butter her up to execute our plan. I know, but then we have no other choice now, do we? I should go and talk to Ava now. Also, I can check Kevin's medicines in her absence and find out more about his disease. But no other soul should know about this, or everyone might think that it was Kevin who lied about his health. And even Kevin would be immensely hurt when he finds out about it. Okay, now I have to leave. We can decide what we should do next later. Sarah distastefully replied, and with this, she came out of Ivy's room. Meanwhile, Sean was sitting in his office and was missing Sarah. He decided to FaceTime her and dial her number. Sarah, on seeing Sean FaceTime her, quickly went and stood in front of the mirror and fixed herself up as she muttered to herself, Sean, seriously, you are one crazy man. You call whenever you want. Just give me a second to fix myself up. She then answered his call. Hello, Mr. Rogers. Did you miss me again? I mean, do you have any idea how many times do you just randomly text, call, or FaceTime me in a day? I know, Mrs. Rogers. But then, is it my fault that I have such a beautiful wife, whom I cannot even stay away from for a minute? By the way, what took you so long to answer the call? The phone was ringing for quite a while, Sean chuckled as he replied. Well, I had to fix up my beauty to impress my husband, didn't I? Replied Sarah. Sean chuckled at Sarah's response and replied, Sarah, you are the most beautiful woman in the world, and you don't have to check yourself in the mirror for it to know. Just see through my eyes, and you will know that you are the prettiest lady ever born. Anyway, I called you because I missed you, and I wanted to see your lovely face once. Sarah blushed at his compliment. Sean, we just met a few hours ago before you left for work, and you already miss me? But then, if I'm being honest, I miss you too. But work is important too, right? Keep up with your work. We will talk later, okay? Love you, and bye. And with that, Sarah disconnected the call. As he hung up the call, Sean was smiling like a fool, looking at the phone in his hand as he muttered, What is going on with me? I am becoming more and more addicted to Sarah nowadays. Sarah, what have you done to me? Meanwhile, Adam and Lily were spending quality time with each other. However, something was bothering Lily, and she was hiding that fact from Adam. She stood at the window in her bedroom, and as she gazed out of it, she thought to herself, God, what is going on? I don't understand anything. I have to first check whether what I'm thinking is correct or not. But what scares me the most is what Adam might think of all this. Will he be upset? But then why would he? Just then, Adam appeared and walked towards Lily as he enveloped her in his arms and asked, What's the matter, baby? Why do you look so distracted as if something's on your mind? Is everything okay? Seeing Adam's concern for her, Lily was overwhelmed with emotions and tears started flowing down her cheeks. Adam was surprised to see Lily suddenly cry. Lily then hugged Adam and sniffled. Adam, I need to tell you something. Yes, you can tell me anything. But first, walk in, stop crying, Adam replied. He led Lily to the bed and asked, Okay, now tell me what's wrong. Lily looked at Adam and uttered, Adam, what are your thoughts when I say the reasons I have been feeling so unwell might be because I'm pregnant? That is all fine, but trailed off Adam as he spoke, when he realized what Lily had just said. Adam fell silent for a while and then suddenly asked, Wait for a second. Are you saying that you might be pregnant? Lily meekly nodded her head, and Adam was overjoyed to hear this news as he excitedly embraced Lily and exclaimed, Is this true? I'm so happy. Lily, tell me everything and don't hide anything from me, okay? Lily then calmed Adam down as she humbly replied, Relax, Adam. I'm not sure yet. I haven't confirmed it. Adam glared at Lily as he replied, What? You haven't even confirmed it yet? I was afraid that this news might scare you off, Lily answered. Why would you think that it might scare me off, Lily? Surprisingly asked Adam. In fact, I'm the happiest person to receive this news. And yes, I was upset when I found out it was just your suspicion and not your confirmation that you might be pregnant. You know what? We should clear this confusion first. Tomorrow we can both go to the doctor for a checkup. What do you say? He suggested. 
Lily beamed at him as she leaped into his arms and happily said, Thank you, Adam. You have no idea how worried I was that this news might scare you off, but... Adam, however, stopped Lily from saying anything further and looked at her as he told her, Lily, whatever you do will never scare me off, so don't worry about me. Always remember that we love each other and want to always be together. So if this news turns out to be true, then trust me that I will be the happiest man alive. Meanwhile, at the Rogers mansion, Sarah walked towards the guest room and was about to enter when she stood outside the door and took a deep breath and muttered to herself, Yes, Sarah, you can do this. Just confidently walk in. She then squared her shoulders and opened the door and walked inside the room. Ava, on seeing Sarah, entered her room, got up, and asked, Hey, Sarah, what's up? What are you doing here? Seeing Ava's excellent acting skills, Sarah, too, thought of showing off her acting chops as well. Hey, Ava, I came to talk to you about Kevin. Actually, I wanted Kevin's medical prescriptions. I want him to be diagnosed by the best doctors in the country, which is why I need his history of medical reports that can help them. So can you please hand me his previous medical reports? Sarah smiled at her and replied. Ava was glaring at Sarah when after a while she responded, Sure, Sarah, but then is this really necessary? I mean, he is right now getting treated by the best doctors in the city, so why do you want to take him to another doctor? Also, it might not be very safe for Kevin to keep switching his doctors like this, don't you think? Listening to Ava's excuses, Sarah was sure that something surely did not fit right. She thought of pressuring Ava a little bit into handing over Kevin's documents to her. Sarah nodded her head and she replied, I understand what you're saying, Ava, but after seeing Kevin's condition, I want the best of the best doctors to be in charge of him and look after him. I mean, don't you think that if Kevin is treated by one of the best specialists in the country, then he would get better soon? I mean, after all, you are doing so much for him. So to even visit a psychic for his health, we should try everything in our power to save Kevin, right? Ava, you have really cared for Kevin a lot, and I don't want to see all your efforts go to waste. Anyway, just give me Kevin's medical history records so that at least we don't have any regrets later on. Ava sighed and handed over the reports to Sarah. Sarah hurriedly took the reports from her hand and rushed back to her room. She shut the door behind her and read the reports about Kevin's health. In the reports, it was clearly stated that Kevin was suffering from blood cancer. Sarah, after reading the reports, was worried as she muttered to herself, I know that this is not true. This is definitely Ava's ploy and Kevin is her bait. It is through Kevin that she could enter this house, so that means it's time for a duel between us. But then I don't have any proof to reveal the truth. I have no evidence to reveal her true face in front of the entire family. I have no idea what to do next, and I'm sure that Ava is already plotting her next plan. Everyone thinks that she has changed for the better, but they could not be ignorant from the truth, because the Ava I know will and can never change for anyone. Just then, Ivy entered Sarah's room and walked up to her as she asked, So, did you find the reports? What did it say? Sarah handed over the reports to Ivy, who read it and disappointingly asked, So does this mean that Ava was telling the truth? Sarah said no as she nodded her head sideways and replied, No, Ivy, it is not true. Ava is too smart, and all of these reports are definitely fabricated. I am sure that Ava is just using Kevin as a mere tool for her personal agenda. She wanted to come into this house, and Kevin turned out to be the key that opened the doors to this house for her. And the sad part is that she even succeeded in fooling everyone and came into this house to live with all of us. Episode 110 The Counterattack even after reading Kevin's medical reports, Sarah and Ivy were still convinced that Kevin was healthy and was not suffering from anything, and that it was just one of Ava's dirty plots. However, they were waiting to collect some concrete proof as in order to prove their suspicions correct to the entire family. They would need evidence to back up their claim. They also wanted to check the kind of medications that Kevin was consuming, as it could prove to be a fatal clue for them. Ivy was standing beside Sarah when she turned to look at her and disappointingly asked, What do we do now, Sarah? 
These reports clearly mention Kevin's name on them. So how can we tell the family that he is absolutely fine? Because even if we do, they will ask us what makes us think that. And we will have nothing to say to them based on our suspicions. We need to have some proof to make them believe us, right? Sarah nodded her head in agreement as she replied. Yes, you're right, Ivy. If you want to beat Ava in her own game, then we will have to think like her. As right now, she has everyone's attention in the house. And especially Kevin eating out of the palm of her hand. It will be tough for us to make them believe us right now. And after all the drama that she has done for the past three days, we will have to be extra careful before saying or doing anything next. Our family now have started placing their trust on Ava. On one hand, both Sarah and Ivy were busy unraveling the mystery that Ava had so wisely set up, while on the other hand, Ava was in her room, laughing like a typical villain, as she muttered to herself, <laughs> God, Sarah, I must say you definitely are smart, but unfortunately, not smarter than me. Did you really think that with such poor excuses you could have asked for Kevin's health reports and I too would easily give them to you? No way! She sat and thought about how she had switched the medical reports. Ava and the doctor who had informed Kevin about his condition were conspiring together. It was as per Ava's orders that the doctor had mentioned that Kevin had blood cancer in his reports so that they could fool everyone into thinking that he really did have blood cancer. Ava needed a key to enter Roger's mansion, and apparently that key turned out to be Kevin. She knew that neither Sarah nor anyone from the Rogers family was going to trust her after everything she had done, which is why she used Kevin as a puppet and succeeded in entering the Rogers mansion. Ava, with a sinister smile, mumbled to herself, God, Sarah, it seems like you two are trying to make a move against me, but you are new to this race. Sean has only taught you how to love, but he could not teach you how to cheat. And Sean, who thinks of himself as the mastermind, look how easy it was to trick him again. But this time, it is you who has your guard up against me. But no worries, because eventually, you two are going to fall for my deception. It was, clear from it was clear from Ava's intentions that this time she had covered all the bases. But what she did not know was that she was underestimating Sarah's brilliance and sharpness, as she too this time was ready to face Ava head on. People learn a lot from their past, and after numerous trials and tribulations, life eventually teaches you to fight for yourself, as well as for the people you strive to protect. The same was the situation with Sarah. Ever since they were kids, their relationship hit a lot of high and lows. Sarah had always treated Ava as her little sister, but Ava never once thought of Sarah as her own sister. For Ava, Sarah was always her stepsister who stole her father away from her, and now Sean too. Ava believed that she had lost all the love from her father, which is why she did not want to lose Sean as well this time. She was unable to realize that what she had for Sean wasn't love, but her unreasonable ego, which is why she had entered Roger's mansion with far more determined purpose and tenacity. On the other side, Sarah and Ivy were busy solving the yet unsolvable mystery. Ivy placed a hand on Sarah's shoulder and raised her concern. Sarah, we have nothing in our hands to prove the truth against Ava. We want to bring the truth out into the open about Ava's evil intentions, but nobody besides us knows her real face. Our family thinks that she has completely changed, and Sean too. I mean, Sarah, do you think that Sean has started trusting her a little too much nowadays? Sarah, I hope that you don't take this the wrong way. But aren't you afraid that she might again try to tear both you and Sean apart? What if this stirs up some trouble between you guys? What if she causes a strain in your relationship? No, Ivy, I'm not worried. Because no matter what Ava tries to do, she in no way will be able to separate me and Sean. Also, I know Sean very well. He is just looking out for Ava out of compassion and kindness. He too, just like the others in my family, is impressed to see Ava take care of Kevin so diligently and lovingly. As for him drifting away from me, then let me tell you that it is Ava's pipe dream, because despite all her efforts, she is still going to fail from ripping me and Sean apart. Also, Sean and I no longer have any misunderstandings between us for her to have her way, and it's not going to be easy for her to nab Sean as before. She could even try. We are going to unveil her mask to everyone. As for Sean, I know he is only trusting Ava for Kevin's sake, because if not, then instead of me, it would have been Sean to first chase her off from all of our lives. Sarah smiled at her as she replied. Listening to Sarah, Ivy was a little relieved thinking that Sean would not be going back to Ava, but she was still concerned as to how they were going to free Kevin from Ava's spell 
and raising the same question, she asked, Sarah, you are positive that Sean would not be in two minds about Ava, but what about Kevin? He is not suffering from anything, but still has complete faith over the woman. And the situation is such that we just cannot tell him the truth, as he by no means will believe us. He doesn't have blood cancer, but he does not know that. And he is living his life in fear, waiting for death. He thinks that his life is already over and has no hope left in him. As Ivy uttered these words, her eyes were moist with tears. Listening to Ivy and seeing her break down in tears, Sarah tried to comfort her. Don't worry, Ivy. Soon, we will reveal the truth to Kevin as well. But first, we need to find out what kind of medications he is taking. Because of by the looks of it, Kevin is right now displaying all the symptoms that a patient suffering from blood cancer has. This can only mean one thing, and that is, Ava has certainly done something to his medicines. Sarah expressed her concern. She was talking when they heard someone knock on the door. The housekeeper from outside the door said loudly, Ma'am, Grandma was asking for you. Sarah opened the door and looked at her as she answered. Okay, thank you for informing. Please tell her I will be there in 10 minutes. The maid gave her a nod and left to inform Grandma about Sarah's reply. Sarah then turned to look at Ivy and spoke. Ivy, we can continue this conversation later. Right now, I have to go talk to my Grandma. She has called for me. Sarah entered Grandma's room and inquired. I'm here, Grandma. I heard you called for me. Do you need some help? Sarah, dear, I wanted to request if you wouldn't mind... Grandma smiled at her and replied, Of course, Grandma. What is it? Please tell me, replied Sarah. I wanted you to again make me the soup that you made me the last time, the one where you added butter to it. Can you, dear? Grandma requested. Hearing Grandma's request, Sarah thought, That soup was made by Ava. She's the one who prefers butter in her soup, and now Grandma wants it. What should I do? Sarah was lost in her thoughts when Grandma called out her name and asked, Sarah, what's the matter, dear? Are you busy? If that is the case, then it's okay. You don't have to make me anything. I can have it later. Don't worry. But before Grandma could say anything else, Sarah interrupted her and replied, No, no, Grandma. I'm not busy or anything. It's just that the other day the soup was made by... Sarah was hesitating to continue, and Grandma noticed her hesitation and asked, Yes, Sarah? Tell me, what is it? Sarah, in one single breath, answered, The thing is, Grandma, that day it wasn't me who made the soup, but it was Ava. She is really good at making soups, and she is the only one who likes to add butter to her soups. She used to do that right since she was a kid, and that's why she added butter for you, too, while making the soup for you. Sarah, as she said her piece, thought that now Grandma was going to scold her, but instead, she laughed and replied, Oh, oh I see. That's okay, then. Call Ava here, and I can ask her to make some soup for me, right? Sarah then told the housekeeper to go and call Ava to Grandma's room. Ava innocently entered Grandma's room, and with a very pure and ingenious manner, politely asked, Gran? Grandma, did you ask for me? Is there something I can do for you? Yes, dear. I actually wanted to have the soup made by you last time. I thought it was Sarah who made the soup, but when I asked her, she told me that it was not her but you who made the soup for me. So if you wouldn't mind then, could I trouble you to make it once more? I really liked it last time. Can you make it the same way with butter again? Grandma smiled and replied. Ava was waiting for exactly this opportunity, and she instantly answered, Of course I can. You don't have to ask me. And next time onwards, whenever you want anything, you just have to tell me, and I will make it for you happily. Seeing Ava's acting skills, Sarah thought to herself, Great acting, Ava. You surely are a master at this game, and had I not known better, I too would have fallen for your impressive performance. But don't worry, I will ensure to make you drop your act very soon. Meanwhile, listening to Grandma's request, Ava was thinking, Only if it were not for Sean, then I would not have to stand here and waste my time listening to this crap. I can't believe what all I'm going through just for my love. And now this old hag wants me to make her soup. The very Ava Gray. I don't know how long I will have to continue this goody two-shoes nonsense for Sean. I'm done acting like an angel in front of everyone. I think this only suits Sarah. I can't bear to fulfill all their silly and travel wishes. With such thoughts in her mind, Ava looked at Grandma with a big smile on her face and replied, Okay, Grandma, just wait for a while. I will make a delicious and hot soup just for you in no time. Ava then headed to the kitchen, 
In the kitchen, she started taking out all the ingredients needed to make the soup, and while doing so, she was muttering to herself. How long do I have to tolerate this? One day I have to do this, then the other day I have to do that. But then this is the only way I can win Sean back, and that is only possible if I have everyone else in my bag. I have to continue this, or else how would they believe that I have truly changed? Now finally, I have been successful in winning Sean's trust back. I have to do the same thing to drive Sarah away from him, and then after waiting for the right moment and dumping Kevin, Sean and I will be together forever. Sarah will then cry her entire life, blaming herself for trusting me. But I know one thing for sure right now, she does not, and I have to do everything I can to make her trust me. Ava was halfway done making the soup when her phone started ringing with a call. Ava went out of the kitchen to attend the call. Sarah, on seeing Ava leave, discreetly walked inside the kitchen and stood in front of the soup. Sarah, while looking at the soup, sighed and muttered, Please forgive me, God. I am only going to have to trouble my loved ones only to reveal the truth to everyone. I don't want to do this at all. But then I have no other choice. Please, Grandma, forgive me. But then what else do I do? I'm very much ashamed of myself. I don't want to trouble anyone. But once I reveal her true face, then I myself will own up to my actions and beg for everyone's forgiveness. After that, I will readily accept any punishment in store for me. And with that, Sarah added mushrooms to Ava's soup. Grandma was mildly allergic to mushrooms, which Sarah was aware of, but Ava was not. If Grandma even by mistake had mushrooms, then she would have a mild allergic reaction to it. However, it was nothing serious, as she would immediately recover after consuming Benadryl. Sarah knew about this and thought that before the allergies would even kick in, she would give Grandma the medicine and thereby not let anything happen to her. Sarah just wanted Ava's image to take a hit. Sarah was regretting her actions, but then she had no other option, as she was after all doing all of this to save her family. When Sarah saw Ava returning to the kitchen, she immediately hid behind the refrigerator. Ava came back to the kitchen and saw that the soup was ready. She then served the soup in a bowl and kept it on a tray and then took it to Grandma. Grandma, on seeing Ava enter the room, smiled and asked, Is the soup ready, dear? Come in. I was waiting for you. Grandma very lovingly asked Ava to sit beside her. She then took the bowl of soup from her hands and began drinking it. As she drank, she did not sense anything at first, but then slowly she started feeling weird tingling in her mouth. Seeing Grandma's health worsen all of a sudden, Ava panicked as this was after she drank the soup made by her. Grandma, with a sore throat, asked her, Ava, what did you add to the soup? Nothing much, I just added butter as you wanted, that's all. Ava anxiously answered, No, I think there are mushrooms in this. I'm allergic to mushrooms and I fall sick if I eat any, yelled Grandma in pain. Seeing Grandma's health decline, Ava freaked out and ran to her room to get the emergency medical kit and returned to Grandma's room. Seeing a box in her hand, Grandma suspiciously asked, What is that in your hand now? It is a medical kit, Grandma. I might have Benadryl in this for you. Once you have it, you will get better in no time. And with that, Ava took out the medicine for Grandma and helped her drink it. After taking in the medicine, Grandma felt better after almost 15 minutes, and then she slept. Ava, in the meantime, was thinking, I never added mushrooms. Then how come they were in the soup? Something is wrong. This is definitely done by someone to sabotage me. The first name that came to her mind was Sarah's, but then she brushed it off thinking that Sarah could never do something like this as she could never harm a fly, let alone another human being, which was Ava's specialty. Where did the mushrooms come from? I never added them in the soup, so how come Grandma had them? By any chance, could it be Sarah? No, no, there's no way that it could be Sarah. She could never hurt anyone. I'm very confident that she would never do something like this to Grandma. Then who else could it be? I'm sure that someone in this house wants to expose me, but then who? Never mind. After this incident, I know now that I need to be extra cautious from now on. The tables can be turned at any time. Anyway, the fact that Grandma is allergic to mushrooms can prove to be a crucial piece of information for me in the future. Ava thought to herself, and with a nasty smile on her face, Ava went back to her room. Meanwhile, Sarah was standing outside her room and was cursing herself for being late to give Grandma medicine as her leg got hurt while running to Grandma's room, and by the time she reached, Ava had already given her the medicines. Sarah was thinking to herself that her plan failed big time. 
I hate myself. Not only did the plan fail, but I also caused Grandma harm. I cannot sit idle like this anymore. I have to do something to reveal Ava's true face to everyone in the family. There is no use in playing these kinds of dirty and small tricks. I hope Grandma is fine, she muttered to herself. After Ava returned to her room, Sarah went to Grandma's room and sat beside her for some time, after which she came back to her room. As Sarah entered her room, Sean was already present, and he immediately hugged her as he shouted, Surprise! Sarah was surprised to see Sean come back home early from work. He enveloped Sarah in his arms as he lovingly said, I missed you so much, babe. Every time I have to stay away from you, it feels like someone is pushing me from my sins. I hate to be away from you even for a minute. Sarah chuckled as her cheeks reddened, and she replied, You and your flirting. By the way, aren't you a little too early back home from the office? What about your work there? You have complaints when I come back home early, and even when I come home late. Nothing makes you wives happy, does it? Why are all the women like this? Sean pretended to sulk as he replied. Sarah laughed at him and replied, I was just kidding, Sean. In fact, I'm so happy to see you. Sean, with a huge grin, replied, You are? I am too. Actually, I didn't have much work at the office today, so I thought of spending some time with my lovely wife. Okay now, get dressed fast. We have to go. Where are we going suddenly? Surprisingly, asked Sarah. First, get ready, and then I'll tell you, responded Sean with a wink. After some time, Sarah got dressed and came outside as she asked, Okay, I'm ready now. Tell me, where are we going? Have patience, my dear. It's a surprise, answered Sean. What is Sean's surprise for Sarah? Episode 111 Love and Romance Seeing Grandma's health decline, Ava freaked out and ran to her room to get the emergency medical kit and returned to Grandma's room. Seeing a box in her hand, Grandma suspiciously asked, What is that in your hand now? It is a medical kit, Grandma. I might have Benadryl in this for you. Once you have it, you will get better in no time. And with that, Ava took out the medicine for Grandma and helped her drink it. After taking in the medicine, Grandma felt better after almost 15 minutes, and then she slept. Ava, in the meantime, was thinking, I never added mushrooms. Then how come they were in the soup? Something is wrong. This is definitely done by someone to sabotage me. The first name that came to her mind was Sarah's, but then she brushed it off thinking that Sarah could never do something like this as she could never harm a fly, let alone another human being, which was Ava's specialty. Where did the mushrooms come from? I never added them in the soup, so how come Grandma had them? By any chance, could it be Sarah? No, no, there's no way that it could be Sarah. She could never hurt anyone. I'm very confident that she would never do something like this to Grandma. Then who else could it be? I'm sure that someone in this house wants to expose me, but then who? Never mind, after this incident, I know now that I need to be extra cautious from now on. The tables can be turned at any time. Anyway, the fact that Grandma is allergic to mushrooms can prove to be a crucial piece of information for me in the future. Ava thought to herself, and with a nasty smile on her face, Ava went back to her room. Meanwhile, Sarah was standing outside her room and was cursing herself for being late to give Grandma medicine as her leg got hurt while running to Grandma's room, and by the time she reached, Ava had already given her the medicines. Sarah was thinking to herself that her plan failed big time. I hate myself. Not only did the plan fail, but I also caused Grandma harm. I cannot sit idle like this anymore. I have to do something to reveal Ava's true face to everyone in the family. There is no use in playing these kinds of dirty and small tricks. I hope Grandma is fine, she muttered to herself. After Ava returned to her room, Sarah went to Grandma's room and sat beside her for some time, after which she came back to her room. As Sarah entered her room, Sean was already present and he immediately hugged her as he shouted, Surprise! Sarah was surprised to see Sean come back home early from work. He enveloped Sarah in his arms as he lovingly said, I missed you so much, babe. Every time I have to stay away from you, it feels like someone is pushing me from my sins. I hate to be away from you even for a minute. Sarah chuckled as her cheeks reddened, and she replied, You and your flirting. By the way, aren't you a little too early back home from the office? What about your work there? You have complaints when I come back home early, and even when I come home late. Nothing makes you wives happy, does it? Why are all the women like this? Sean pretended to sulk as he replied. 
Sarah laughed at him and replied, I was just kidding, Sean. In fact, I'm so happy to see you. Sean, with a huge grin, replied, You are? I am too. Actually, I didn't have much work at the office today, so I thought of spending some time with my lovely wife. Okay now, get dressed fast. We have to go. Where are we going suddenly? Surprisingly, asked Sarah. First, get ready, and then I'll tell you, responded Sean with a wink. After some time, Sarah got dressed and came outside as she asked, Okay, I'm ready now. Tell me, where are we going? Have patience, my dear. It's a surprise, answered Sean. Sarah decided not to ask him anything further, and Sean and Sarah headed downstairs holding hands with each other. As they reached down the stairs, everyone was sitting in the living room when they saw them leaving. Sean, Sarah, are you guys going somewhere? Mr. Vincent asked. Sean looked at him and answered, Yes, Dad, we are going for dinner. Okay, okay, carry on, both of you. Enjoy your date. But yes, Sean, please take good care of Sarah, all right? Mrs. Rogers exclaimed with a smile. Yes, please be careful with Sarah. If anything happens to her, then you will be answerable to me. Do you understand? Mr. Rogers announced playfully. Listening to their instructions for him, Sean replied, First of all, let me remind you all that I am her husband, and no one better than me can take care of her. Second of all, it looks like all of you here are more concerned about Sarah than your own son, huh? Hearing Sean's pouty response, everyone in the living room burst out into laughter. While everyone was caught up laughing away, Ava looked at Sean and Sarah and thought, Go have fun. Have all the dinners you want. Who knows, this could end up being your last dinner together. As after tonight, you both will no longer be able to go on such dates together anymore. Meanwhile, Sarah too was well aware of Ava's real intentions now. And while observing her, Sarah thought to herself, I know what you're thinking, Ava. But don't worry, this most definitely won't be our last dinner together. Because come what may, I will never let you succeed in your evil plans this time. Sean and Sarah came out of the house and walked towards the car. But before Sarah could sit in the car, Sean stood in front of her while leaning onto the car with his hand folded. He then looked at her and asked, Sarah, don't you think that you are forgetting something? Forgetting something? Like what? Asked Sarah confusingly. Just then, before she could react, he wrapped his arms around her waist as he pulled her in for a kiss. As they broke apart, Sean with a sly grin looked at her and said, Haven't I told you that I'm very particular about my good luck kisses before heading out to do or go anywhere important? And with a wink, he went to the other side of the car and sat in the driver's seat, while Sarah stood like a statue in her spot, trying to comprehend what just happened. Seeing Sarah stand still, Sean honked his car horn as he leaned in to look at her through the window and called out, My dear wife, are you planning to just stand out there and spend our entire evening? I thought you were curious about your surprise. Sarah, as she heard Sean's voice, came back to her senses and with a smile on her face sat in the car. As they drove, Sean kept sneaking glances at Sarah when finally Sarah turned to look at him and asked, What is it, Sean? Why are you looking at me like that? Sean took a deep breath as he replied, It is just that I was thinking how could someone be so damn beautiful? A cool breeze, a desolate road, a romantic track, and Sarah's radiating beauty all seemed like a dream to Sean. Sarah had her eyes closed as she listened to the beautiful romantic track which was playing on the car's radio. Just then, she heard Sean's voice and opened her eyes to see that Sean was humming the lyrics of the song along with it as he lovingly looked at her. She looked at him and giggled. Wow, I did not expect my husband to be such an amazing singer, she remarked. <laughs> if his wife is such a beauty, then no one can blame the husband for trying to woo her with a song, right? Replied Sean as he too chuckled. Both of them laughed at his response together when Sean stopped the car. He then looked at Sarah and said, We have reached our destination, ma'am. I hope you like it. Sean got out of the car and ran to open the door for Sarah. Sarah, with a wide grin, came out of the car and was amazed to see them standing outside a super luxurious hotel. She looked at Sean astonishingly and exclaimed, Wow, Sean, it looks like such a fancy hotel. We own this hotel, Sarah. So of course it's fancy, Sean chuckled as he replied. What? We own this hotel? I heard that this hotel is well recommended by hotshot celebs who come here regularly either for their concerts or for their movie promotions. And why did I not know this hotel was ours? I am your wife, you know, surprisingly yelped Sarah. 
Sean nodded his head in response to Sarah's knowledge as he replied, Yes, that's true. This hotel was specially authorized only for celebrities. We want all the celebs who come to Orlando to have the best experience here. And also, it is good for business, while also solidifying our capability and stature as a company. And as for you being unaware of this, it is because Dad is in complete charge of this hotel. I don't have to worry about it. Also, don't you think it was nice that you did not know? As this way, you are surprised even more now, am I right? Sarah was quite impressed after listening to Sean. She then looked at him and complimented. That's great, Sean. So now, my dear husband, are we going to have dinner in this hotel? You can bet on it, replied Sean proudly. Sean extended his hand towards Sarah, and she too took his hand, and both of them walked inside the hotel. As soon as the manager of the hotel saw them entering, he immediately rushed towards them as he greeted. Good evening, sir. We were waiting for you. Good evening, ma'am. Welcome. Sarah, with a kind smile, wished him thanks. The manager then looked at Sean and informed him, Sir, everything is ready, and as set per your instructions. Listening to the manager, Sean nodded his head in understanding, while at the same time, Sarah was looking at both of them perplexingly. Sean, noticing the confusion written on her face, whispered into her ears, Have some patience, my sweetheart. Just a few more minutes, and then you will find everything out. Sarah, from Sean's words, understood that he had definitely planned something huge for her, which is why she decided not to question him further and just wait to see the surprise with her own eyes. She held Sean's hand and walked alongside him. After a while, they reached the roof of the hotel, where the special arrangements were done by the manager and the staff of the hotel, as per Sean's instructions. Sarah stood at the entrance where the beautifully lit candles paved her path into the roof. As she walked ahead, she saw shiny golden fairy lights above her head illuminating the entire roof and providing warmth to the atmosphere. A lot of lanterns were floating in the air while golden-colored balloons filled the dining areas and they rustled around her as she walked and reached the center where there was a barbecue and cozy dining set up around it. The entire setting was quite intimate and cozy and perfect for a romantic evening with Sean. Seeing the entire arrangement, Sarah was overwhelmed with happiness as she gleefully looked at Sean and gasped, Wow, Sean, this is stunning. I could not have ever imagined for you to do something this extravagant for me. Thank you so much, Sean. And with that, Sarah embraced Sean. Sean hugged her back. He signaled the manager to leave, who in return nodded his head and left the area. He then led Sarah to the dinner table. He pulled the chair for her, and then he went to take his own seat. As they settled down, Sean smiled and asked, So, Sarah, did you like my surprise? I loved it. I must say I never did take you to be such a romantic. I mean, you are really good at planning dates, you know. I can finally see all your hidden talents, Sean, Sarah excitedly replied. Just then, a waiter appeared with their food. He served all of Sarah's favorite dishes, and Sarah too knew that every time they went on a date, Sean would always order her favorite food for her. After dinner, both Sean and Sarah stood at the edge of the roof, soaking in the beauty of the sparkling city lights as they overlooked the entire city from the roof, the twinkling lights of the city at night and the moonlight shining above them. Sarah was elated as she stood in Sean's arms, watching over the entire city. Sean, do you know how beautiful this view looks to me right now? There is a sort of peace right here at this moment. I feel like I'm out of this world with nothing else but just you, me, and this view. Just you and me like this forever, she uttered. Sean smiled as he placed his finger on her lips and said, Shh, did you know that you talk a lot? Sarah laughed as she pushed away his fingers from her mouth and replied, Yes, I do. But isn't that why you love me? Well, that's true, Sean grinned and responded. By the way, let me tell you that we are not yet done with your surprise. There is more coming your way, he added. What? Another surprise? exclaimed Sarah. What is it? she asked. Sean grinned and took out a blindfold from his pocket. He put the piece of cloth on Sarah's eyes and blindfolded her when Sarah held his hand and asked, What's with you in these blindfolds? Where are you planning taking me this time, Sean? Patience, Sarah, patience. Just trust and follow me. You will find out for yourself, Sean chuckled and replied. Sean took her to the most exclusive suite in the hotel, and after entering the room, he removed her blindfolds. Sarah slowly opened her eyes and saw that she was standing in a suite along with Sean. She looked around to see that the room was beautifully decorated with aromatic candles and roses. 
She saw that the rose petals were scattered on the bed, and she started blushing as she looked at Sean and asked, When did you prepare for this as well? Sean smiled as he turned to her and hugged her from behind and replied, I did not have any other choice, did I? We have no time at home, and whenever I get some time, you end up being busy with something or the other. It has been so long since we spent some time with each other, just the two of us. And with that, Sean carried her in his arms to the bed. He laid her down on the bed and slowly towered over her. Both of them gazed into each other when Sean dropped down and claimed her lips with his own. A moan escaped her mouth as she parted her lips. She wrapped her arms around his neck, holding him like he was her most treasured possession. Her body lit up to unimaginable sensations as it entangled with his surging knee. He parted from her as he looked at her with an intense gaze and whispered, you are the most beautiful woman that I have ever seen. And I'm sorry, but I cannot hold myself back anymore. Sean's finger traced her body as he placed delicate kisses on her neck. Sarah closed her eyes with her heart pounding off her chest as she gripped his hair. His every touch spoke volumes of the love and desire that he had for her. Their bodies blended in harmony as he in bated breath murmured, I'm going to make you mine. Episode 112 Love and Romance Part 2 Sean's finger traced her body as he placed delicate kisses on her neck. Sarah closed her eyes, with her heart pounding off her chest as she gripped his hair. His every touch spoke volumes of the love that he had for her. Their bodies blended in harmony as he bated breath murmured, I'm going to make you mine. He swooped in to kiss her, making her lose all other senses. She could taste the desire on his lips as he kissed her gently, at first, but then harder with his hands firmly cupping her face. Her hands trailed down his body as she undid the buttons of his shirt to free his muscular body from the rude shackles of the clothes. And so did Sean as he reached to unzip her dress while not breaking away from each other. Sean kissed her forehead, her nose, and her cheeks, amplifying the burning turmoil inside Sarah. As she undid all the buttons, Sean pulled away from her for a brief second to toss over his shirt completely. He gasped, God, Sarah, you're killing me. Sarah, with a coquettish grin, pulled him back in as they devoured each other with fierce passion. Sean wanted Sarah to know how much he loved her. He wanted her to know how much he was desperate for her. He wanted her to recognize all the feelings that he had in store for her right at this moment. His mouth coupled with hers as his hands traced along every inch of her body. His head gently moved towards her neck as he kissed her. Sarah whimpered in pleasure with her hands moving to his neck as her body reacted as if wanting more. Sean groaned as he looked at her and muttered, I am sorry, baby. Sarah looked at him with question marks on her face and he noticed her baffled expression as he explained, You want to know why I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry because I thought I could be gentle with you, but you leave me no choice but to lose my mind. I wish I could hold you like this forever and spend my entire life with you. I want you in my arms like this forever. Sarah smiled when Sean pinned her hands above her head and closed the distance between them. Her dress drooped down over her shoulders and Sean helped her out of it, freeing her body completely. He leaned back as his eyes slid up and down her body, lingering with an intense desire, reflecting on his face. She buried her face in his chest to hide her red-hot cheeks. Their bodies pressed together as Sarah closed her eyes, letting the passion overtake her. The next morning, the sun rose as Sean and Sarah slept in each other's warm embrace, under the white silk sheets covering their bodies. Sarah slowly opened her eyes to see Sean sleeping peacefully beside her. And that is when the thoughts of last night came racing into her mind. A smile crept onto her face as she saw Sean sleeping peacefully beside her. And that is when the thoughts of last night came racing into her mind. A smile crept onto her face as she stroked his hair while fondly gazing at him and muttered, Sean, thank you for everything. Last night was everything that I could have asked for and more. I cannot even begin to tell you how happy I am right now. I want the rest of my life to be just like this, with you and me together always, and no one to tear us apart. 
No one will or can tear us apart. I will never let them steal you away from me. Never, mumbled Sean in response, much to Sarah's surprise. Sean still had his eyes closed when on hearing his response. Sarah was flustered as she got up to sit on the bed and stuttered. You, you're awake. I woke up before you did, babe. Also, I don't talk in my sleep, you know. Sean smiled as he replied. Sarah put up a pouty face as she complained. You sneaky guy. Then why were you pretending to sleep when you were already awake, huh? Sean laughed as he replied. That's because I wanted to know what you say about me when you think I'm not listening to you. You two are sneaky, you know. That's why we both are made for each other. Sarah chuckled at his response as she looked away from him and sassily replied. Well, I can agree with that statement after all. We definitely are made for each other. Seeing Sarah's face away from him, Sean too, with a grin on his face, got up to sit on the bed. He gently tugged her towards him to make her look at him. As their eyes met, Sean flirtatiously looked at her and suggested, Now that you agree with me, how about round two in the morning? And with that, he immediately reached for her as he held her face in his hands and pressed his mouth against her. Her lips parted and she kissed him back without any hesitation. With one hand around her waist, Sean pulled her in, leaving no space for air between them as tension mounted in her body. The kiss was hot and hungry as her hand grabbed onto his hair and their tongues tangled with each other, igniting the fire surging inside them. His fingers felt the warmth of her skin. Just then, Sean's phone started ringing. Sean, however, ignored it as he continued kissing Sarah when his phone started ringing for the second time. As they heard it ring again, this time, Sarah pulled away from him as she gently pushed him back, and Sean groaned in frustration. Sarah chuckled and said, <laughs> Hard luck, I guess, but the phone has been ringing for quite a while. Pick up the call, Sean. It could be something urgent. Sean pretended to sulk as he whined. See how important your husband is? I mean, everyone except you needs me. You need to take good care of your husband, you know. Sarah laughed at his comment and replied, <laughs> Is that so? Then I think I will have to work hard on taking care of you from now on. I will do my best. Now hurry up and answer the call. Sean flashed a sweet smile and picked up his phone, kept on the bedside table and answered, Hello? He was listening to the other person on the line when he replied in shock. What? Oh my God. Okay, don't worry. We will be there soon. Seeing Sean scream in worry, Sarah got scared and with concern asked, What is it, Sean? What happened? Kevin, Kevin, Sarah, Kevin is in the hospital. His health suddenly declined and he is currently admitted into the hospital, stuttered Sean in response. Hearing about Kevin's health, Sarah immediately screamed in worry. What? How did that happen? Sean, we need to leave right now. Sean nodded his head as he assured. Don't worry, Sarah. I'm sure that he will be just fine. Let's go, come on. Both Sean and Sarah hurried to the hospital. On their way to the hospital, Sarah's mind was clouded with the thoughts involving Kevin. She could not understand anything as she was worried over whether his health had really declined or whether this was another one of Ava's ruses. After a while, both of them reached the hospital where everyone in their family was already present. Ava was pretending to cry when she saw Sean and ran toward him with tears in her eyes so that Sean could hug her. However, before she could reach him, Sarah came between them and interjected the hug as she pulled Ava in her embrace. Sean too at first found it strange to see Ava run towards him, but then when he saw Sarah hug her, he brushed it off, thinking that Ava was running towards them to hug her sister and not him. He walked towards Mrs. Rogers and worriedly inquired, Mom, what is all this? How did Kevin's health deteriorate suddenly? What happened to him? I too have no idea, Sean. We were all in our own rooms when we heard Ava screaming. She was screaming Kevin's name in panic. And when we rushed to her room, we saw that Kevin was on the floor with blood coming out of his mouth. We immediately brought him to the hospital then. I'm really worried, Sean. I hope everything is okay with him, Mrs. Rogers explained nervously. Sarah too kept up the act and pretended to console Ava. Don't cry, Ava. I know how much you love Kevin, but don't worry. He's quite strong. I'm sure that he will be fine and healthy and will return to us very soon. Your love for him will heal him and he will get better in no time. 
and all of us will get to see his happy face once again. Sarah spoke assuringly. Hearing Sarah repeatedly quoting Ava's feelings and love for Kevin was ticking Ava off big time. My love for him? Yeah, right. He is just a means for me to reach Sean. After which, I neither need him nor you. Both of you are just toys for me who I will discard. When I'm done playing with you both, then I will just throw you both away from my life, thought Ava to herself. Ava at the time was really infuriated. She, however, could not display her anger to anyone there, which is why she plastered a fake smile on her face and looked at Sarah as she replied, Yes, you are absolutely right, Sarah. Kevin is my true love and he most definitely will get better and be back home all healthy. Just then, Sarah questioned her. But Ava, how did this happen? What happened to Kevin so much that he ended up in the hospital? Hearing Sarah's question, Ava fell silent for a while. After a few seconds, she answered, I myself don't know, Sarah. I have no idea as I was taking a shower all that time. And when I came out of the shower, I saw that Kevin was laying unconscious on the floor with blood coming out of his mouth. I was terrified to see Kevin like this and in a panic started screaming his name. That is when the others arrived and after that, we all brought him to the hospital. I don't know why this is happening to Kevin. He is such an amazing person. Then why is God being so cruel to him? On one hand, Ava was trying to win everyone's sympathy with her impressive acting skills. On the other hand, Ivy was standing in a corner sobbing profusely. Sarah noticed her and walked up to her as she embraced her. Please don't cry, Ivy. We need to be strong now. Only then can we heal Kevin, as well as reveal the truth about Ava to everyone. Trust me, he's fine, as my heart says that this time again, it is Ava who is behind all of this. Sarah consolingly said to Ava. Ivy lifted her head to look at Sarah as she sniffled. I know, Sarah, but that does not matter, does it? As in the end, the one who is being used as a pawn in all of these mind games is Kevin. He does not even know that he is being toyed with and still is paying the price with his own life. What if something really happens to him because of all of this? What will we do then? Sarah, as she listened to Ivy, tried to explain. Get a hold of yourself, Ivy. What are you saying? Nothing will happen to Kevin. You cannot lose hope like this. You need to be strong, as when one door closes, the other opens. You need to be brave and face everything head on. We cannot just sit and complain, but instead we ourselves need to make things happen. And trust me, we will. Just then, the doctor came out of Kevin's room, and everyone rushed towards him and inquired. Doctor, how is Kevin now? The doctor took a deep breath before replying. He's fine for now, but I suggest all of you take good care of him as the patient is suffering from blood cancer, and emergencies like this can happen at any time. I hope you are all understanding what I'm trying to say. So can we meet him now, doctor? Sean asked the doctor. Not now, Mr. Rogers. You will have to wait till the patient regains his consciousness before meeting him, replied the doctor. Everyone nodded their heads in understanding and was anxiously waiting for Kevin to wake up. Sarah knew that something did smell fishy regarding Kevin's health, and she was sure that it was Ava who was behind all of this. She also knew that it was not going to be easy to expose the truth about Ava, as she was not going to easily let herself get caught. Sarah, too, at the same time, did not have any evidence to protect the family members from falling into her trap. All of their faces clearly reflected the worry and fear they had for Kevin, while Ivy was kneeling in front of the Lord, praying for his speedy recovery. Ivy was completely shaken up after seeing Kevin in such a state, and Sarah was trying her best to console and comfort her. Just then, she saw Ava quietly sneaking her way to the doctor's office. Sarah decided to follow her as she thought, why is Ava sneaking off to the doctor's office? I think I might just find the answers to my questions if I follow her. I need to find out what Ava is hiding. I need to know whether she is truly behind Kevin's health condition. And with this thought, she asked Ivy to take care of herself and started quietly following Ava. As she followed Ava, she noticed that Ava walked into the doctor's office and immediately locked the door from inside after entering. Sarah, too, moved stealthily towards the door and stood outside the office. She tried to peek inside through the small and round glass window on the door, trying to eavesdrop on their conversation. 
That is when she saw Ava take out a wad of cash and hand it over to the doctor. Sarah could not believe her own eyes, and she pressed her ears close to the door, trying to listen into their conversation. Sarah was left staggered as she kept listening to Ava and the doctor's conversation. What was it that knocked Sarah speechless? Was it related to Kevin's health? Or is Ava up to something new?